very much. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined us today. Uh, and uh, thank you to my own organization for working so hard on this particular issue. Um, this actually isn't the press conference we were expecting to have today. Over the past few months, we've been communicating with environmental groups, the chemical companies, the EPA, talking with the firefighters who've been working on this issue. We've been telling them that we want to get a very dangerous chemical, that's DECA, out of consumer products. And earlier this week, in Congress, I introduced a bill to ban DECA in three years. And then we called a press conference. Then after the close of business last night, the major chemical companies that manufacture DECA announced that they will voluntarily stop producing DECA by 2013. I'm very encouraged by their voluntary agreement between the chemical companies and the EPA, and I'm very glad they saw it our way. If they follow through on their agreement, we will have accomplished our primary goal, getting this dangerous chemical out of the environment. But I'm going to push ahead with the bill for two reasons. First, there have been voluntary agreements before that haven't exactly turned out the way they should have. For example, a voluntary agreement to take to tex uh, toxins out of Teflon pans has a mixed record of success. Second, and important, this bill makes sure that any alternatives to DECA that are used will be as safe as they need to be. The voluntary agreement the chemical companies entered into provides no such assurance. Let me give you a little bit of background on this issue. It was Maine that initiated this discussion in 2004, being one of the first states in the country to begin phasing out DECA. The Maine bill will go into full effect two weeks from today. The bromine chemical family has been used as flame retardants for many years and is part of a group of chemicals that impair immune system responses, interferes with the regulation of reproductive hormones, and has been linked to delays in intellectual and physical development. Infants are exposed to some of the highest level of this harmful chemical through breastfeeding. And if they don't get it through their mother, children's project, products such as car seats, cribs, and strollers have been found to have high levels of DECA. Now, frankly, I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for the main firefighters, the main environmental groups, and my own daughter, Hannah Pingree, Speaker of the House, who introduced this bill in Maine. I want to tell you a little bit about Hannah, who couldn't be with us here today. I chose to raise my own children on a rural island off the Maine coast, surrounded by what we all think is clean air and clean water. But when my daughter, Hannah, in the legislature was tested for chemical toxins a few years ago, they found 19 different types of flame retardants inside of her. This not only affects Hannah, but affects everyone throughout this state and any children she might have and children they might have. It also affects our firefighters who have to deal with these difficult chemicals when they're there protecting us. DECA does not go away easily and will remain in our bodies indefinitely. DECA has become so pervasive around the world it has been found in mussels and fish along the U.S. coast and has even been found in polar bears on the North Pole. And now DECA is being used in plastic pallets for shipping produce all over the country. And when water is sprayed on the fruits and vegetables on those pallets, they become contaminated with the chemical. My bill phases out and ultimately bans DECA bromine by 2013. It mandates disclosure of products containing DECA to the EPA and requires safer alternatives to be created and to replace this toxic chemical. I have worked closely with the International Association of Firefighters, Environmental Working Group, and Environmental Health Strategy to help develop this important piece of legislation. I greatly appreciate the contributions of each of these groups in getting us to this critical point. And I want to say it again. We wouldn't be here introducing federal legislation. The EPA wouldn't be moving forward if it hadn't been for all of this starting in the state of Maine. For our courageous firefighters, our smart environmentalists, our hardworking legislator that stood up to the special interests moving this bill forward. One more time, this is Maine taking the lead, bringing to Washington what needs to be done we're happy to hear about the response from the chemical companies and the EPA, but anxious to make sure we stay on top of it and this really happens. 